Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Mission Bay Convention Center at Node Summit 2017. We've been coming to Node Summit off and on for a number of years and it's pretty amazing the growth of this application for development. It really seems to take off. There's about eight or 900 people here. It's kind of the limits of the facility here at Mission Bay. But really, really excited to be here and it's not surprising happy to see Intel is here in full force. Our first guest is Monica N.A. Pietrasanu and she is the Director of Software Engineering for Intel. Welcome. Thank you, hello, and thank you very much for inviting me. Oh, it's, absolutely. Uh, definitely exciting to be here, know this, uh, this dynamic community that grows in uh, one year like others in 10, so it's always uh, exciting to be at one of these events you know, and present about the work we are doing for Node. That's right, now you're on a panel later on taking benchmarking to the next level, so what is that all yeah. about? That is, uh, that is part of the work we are doing for Node. Uh, and uh, I want to mention here the word stewardship. Intel is a long time contributor in the open source communities uh, and has assumed the performance leadership in many of these communities. We are doing the same for Node. We are uh, driving, we are trying to be a steward for the performance in Node.js. And uh, what this means is we are watching to make sure that uh, every check-in that happens uh, doesn't uh, impact performance. We are also uh, optimizing Node, so it um, gives the best of the hardware out, runs best on, uh, on the newest hardware we have. And also we are um, developing right now um, new measures, new benchmarks, uh, which better reflect the reality of the data center use cases. The way Node is getting used in the cloud, the way Node is getting used in the data center, uh, there are very few ways to measure that today. And with this fast development of the ecosystem, um, my team has also taken this role of um, working with the industry partners and coming up with um, realistic measures for the performance. Right, so are these new benchmarks that you're defining around the, the capabilities of Node or are you using old benchmarks or how are you kind of addressing that challenge? That's, uh, we, we started by running what was available and most of the, uh, the benchmarks were uh, quite, um, let's say, isolated. They were focused on a single node, one operation, not very realistic in terms of what uh, the measurements were being done for the right. data center, especially as uh, in, the, in the data center, everything is evolving, right? So nothing is just running on one, one single computer. Right. Uh, everything is impacted by network latencies. We have a significant number of servers out there. We have multiple uh, software components interacting. So it's, it's way more complex. And then you have containers coming into the picture and uh, everything makes it uh, harder and harder uh, to evaluate from the performance perspective. And I think Node is doing a pretty good job from the performance perspective, but who's watching that it stays the same? I think performance is one of those things that you value when you don't have it, right? right? right Otherwise right. you just take it as granted, like right, it's there. Right. Um, so my team, my team at Intel is uh, focused on uh, top tier scripting languages. We are part of this uh, larger software organization called Software and Services Group. And um, we are right now optimizing and um, driving the, the performance for uh, Python, Node.js, PHP, HHVM, so some of the top tier languages used in the, in the data center space. Right, right. So Node is actually our interesting um, uh, story in terms of evolution, because we've seen also um, an extraordinary growth. We've seen, is probably the one who's doubled for the past right, three years, right. the community has doubled, everything has doubled for Node, right? Even the, like the number of, um, of commits, depends on which statistics you look, it's, it's they're all up and to the right, yeah, very steep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then it's a, it's a um, very fast um, uh, progress, which we need to keep pace with. And um, one, uh, one thing that um, is important for us is to make sure that we expose the best of our hardware to the software. Um, with Node, that is uh, try, taking a, an interesting approach because Node is one of uh, what we call CPU front-end bound. It's okay. uh, having a large footprint. It's one of the largest uh, footprint uh, applications that um, we, we've seen, and for this, we want to make sure that the newest CPUs we bring to market are able to, to handle it. I was just, just going to say, they had Trevor Livingston on from HomeAway kicked off things today. Talk about the growth. He said a year ago, they had one Node.js project. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And this is a big site that, that competes yeah. with like Airbnb. That's now owned by Expedia. Now they said, he said they had 15 projects in production, 22 almost in production, and 75 other internal projects in one year from one. So that shows pretty amazing growth and, and the power of the application. And, and from Intel's point of view, you guys are all in on cloud, you're all in on data centers, we've mm -hmm. all seen all the ads. Um, so you guys are really aggressively taking on the optimization for the unique challenges and special environment that is cloud, which is computing everywhere, computing nowhere, but at the end of the day, it's got to sit on somebody's servers and there's got to be a CPU uh, in the background. So as you look at all these different languages, um, why do you think Node has gone so crazy? Oh, I think there are several reasons. Uh, and um, my background is a C++, C++ developer, so coming, and security, so coming into the Node space, uh, one thing amazed me, like only 2% of your, uh, only 2% of the code is yours when you write an application. So that is like, where 2%. is the other 98% coming from? Or it's already pre-developed. It's an ecosystem you're just pulling those libraries. Right, right. So that, what brings, in addition to the security risks you have, it brings a fantastic time to market. So it enables you as a developer to launch an application in a matter of days instead of months right, and right. maybe a year. So time to market is an unbeatable proposition, uh, right. and I think that's what, uh, what drives uh, this space where you need to uh, launch new applications uh, faster and faster and upgrade. Um, for us, um, that's also an interesting challenge because we have, like, our CPU roadmaps are not days, right, are, are years. So what we want right, to make right. sure is that we um, feed back into the CPU roadmap the uh, developments we are seeing uh, into this uh, space. I have, um, on my team, I have uh, several principal engineers who are working with the CPU architects to make sure that um, we are continuously uh, providing this information back. One thing I wanted to mention is, we, as, as you probably know, since you've been talking to other, other Intel um, um, uh, people, we've been launching recently the uh, latest generation server, Skylake. Uh, and right. on uh, this latest generation uh, node, some of the node workloads we, we've been optimizing and measuring show 1.5x performance improvement from the prior generation. So this is a fantastic boost. Yes. And uh, this doesn't happen only uh, from hardware, it happens from a combination of hardware and software. Right, right. Uh, and we are continuously to work, we are continuing to work now with uh, the CPU architects to make sure that the future generation also keeps space with right. uh, you know, it's interesting, kind of the three horsemen of, of computing, if you will, right? There's compute, there's store, and there's I.O. and networking, and it's interesting yep. that, that Ryan Dahl, it's funny they brought up Ryan Dahl, we interviewed him back at the Node.js, I think in 2011, still one of our most popular segments on theCUBE, we do thousands of interviews a year, he's still one of the most popular, but to really rethink the I.O. problem in this asynchronous form seems to be just another real breakthrough that opens up all types of capacity and compute and store when you don't have to sit and wait. So that must be another thing that you guys have addressed from kind of the hardware and the software perspective. Yeah, you are right on spot because I think Node, comparing to other scripting languages, brings um, brings more uh, into the picture the whole platform. So it's right. not only a CPU, it's also a networking, it's also related to storage, so, so it, it uh, makes the entire platform to shine if it's optimized to the, the right capabilities. Right. And um, we've been uh, investing a lot into this. We've, uh, we have um, all our work is uh, made available as open source. All our contributions are, contributed, are, are uh, upstreamed back into the, the main right. tree. Uh, we also uh, started a, an effort to work with the industry in um, developing these new workloads. Uh, so last uh, year at Node Interactive, we launched um, one uh, new workload benchmark uh, for Node, which we call Node DC. Uh, with his first use case, uh, which is an employee information system, okay. uh, simulating what a, a large uh, data center uh, distributed application will be doing. Uh, this year, now at uh, Node um, Summit, we will be um, presenting the updated version of that, 1.0 this time, it was version 0 0.9 last, uh, last time, where we added um, support for containers, uh, we uh, included uh, several capabilities to be able to run uh, in a configurable manner uh, in as many configurations as needed. And we are also contributing this back. Uh, we submitted it to the Node Foundation, so it becomes an official benchmark for uh, the Node Foundation, which means 
every night after the um, build system runs, this will be run as part of the regressions uh, to make sure that the performance doesn't degrade. Right. So there are, that's, that's part of, of our work and that's also continuing um, an effort we started uh, with what we call uh, the Languages Performance Portal. Uh, if you go to languagesperformance.intel.com, we have an entire lab behind that portal uh, in which every night we build these top tier scripting languages, including Python, including Node, including uh, PHP, and we run uh, performance regressions on them on the latest Intel architecture. Right, right. So, and we are contributing the results back to the open source community to make sure that the community is aware uh, if uh, any regression happens, and we have a team of engineers who jumps on those regressions and the root causes it, analyzes it right, right. To, to figure it out. So Monica, we're almost yeah. out of time. Before I let you go, though, we talked before we, we got started, um, I, I love Kim Stevenson, I've interviewed her a bunch of times, and you know, one of the conversations we had was about Moore's Law, um, and that Moore's Law is really an attitude, and it's kind of a way to do things more than hitting the physical limitations on, 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 on chips, which I think is a silly conversation. You're at a constantly, in the role of constantly optimizing and making things better, faster, cheaper. As you sit back and look at kind of what you've done to date and looking forward, I mean, do you see any slowdown in this ability to continue to tweak, optimize, tweak, optimize, and just get more and more performance out of some of these new technologies? I, I wouldn't see slowdown. That's at least from where I see it on the software, on the software side. I'm seeing only acceleration. So the hardware brings a 30%, 40% improvement. We have to we add on top of that the right. software optimizations, which bring 10, 20% improvements as well. So that continuously uh, is, is going on, and um, I, I'm not seeing it improving. I'm seeing it uh, becoming more. Um, uh, there is a need for customization. So that's where when we design the. Um, workloads, we need to make them customizable because there are different use cases across the data center customers. So they are used differently and we want to make sure that we reflect the reality that's out there in the world and that our customers, our partners can also leverage them uh, to measure something that's meaningful for them. So in terms of um, speed, no, we, we want to make sure that we fully utilize our CPU and we grow to more and more cores and uh, increase frequency. We also grow to more capabilities and our focus is also to, to uh, make the entire platform to shine. And when we talk about platform, we talk about networking, we talk about uh, uh, non-volatile memory, we talk about uh, storage as right. well as CPU. Right. So Gordon's safe. You're safe, Gordon Moore. Your law is still solid. All right, uh, Monica, thanks for taking a few minutes of your day and, uh, and good luck on your panel later this afternoon. Thank you very much for having me here. It was Absolutely. A pleasure. All right, Jeff Rick, checking in from Node Summit 2017 in San Francisco. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks for watching.